The age of virtual reality in rowing has begun. I think you're over here. Here. If you've been wondering what the latest going on in the world of tech as far as the indoor rowing world goes, virtual reality has entered the chat. So if you're interested in finding out what your next experience could be on your rowing machine, stay tuned. What I'm taking a look at today is Holofit from Holodia. It is a rowing platform for virtual reality in which there is a whole lot to unpack and explore. So let's just get right into it. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse where you build the life that you wanna live and we just happen to use rowing usually to get you there. So this is just an honest review of the whole of it. They did send me the headset, but there's no agreement here as to whether I say good or bad things about it. So everything that you're gonna hear is just my true feelings about testing it and filling you in on what I actually experienced. So the first thing that I wanna actually address is just the virtual reality on a rower part, because inevitably that's probably your first question. What is it even like to have a virtual reality headset on in a rower? And I found that that was probably my first hurdle that I came up against was, what is it like to be rowing but not see your surroundings and yet there's a whole world happening inside your headset. And so that is definitely a challenge that you face when you introduce virtual reality into the rowing space. It is going to be a different experience. So with that being said, what I had to go through was recalibrating my brain and my body together to be able to process that I was rowing but I wasn't seeing what I was doing. There was no movement of back and forth. I was just enveloped by the world that, that Holofit put me in. So that in and of itself poses, you could call it a hurdle, after maybe my first session or two, I got more comfortable with that and that feeling kind of drifted away. The one thing that didn't end up falling off though was just that feeling of being in it and then when the workout was done, needing to recalibrate to my environment. And I think this probably goes for all virtual reality. So this isn't a whole of fit thing. This is just a virtual reality thing. But man, when I was done, I kind of had to sit there and like shake my head and reconnect my brain and my body to my physical space because that inevitably poses a challenge. The other piece of it is you better know where all of your things are before you put that headset down. Because man, if you leave your water bottle on the floor next to you, you are gonna be grasping at straws with no idea of where that water bottle is or where your handle is. Man, trying to find the handle hook for your handle, forget about it. It's not easy when you have a virtual reality headset on because you just don't have context. You don't see it and so you're left sitting there kind of banging on things, trying to figure out where they are. So that inherently is just a virtual reality thing. We're introducing a whole new concept to the rowing machine. So with that being said, we can now actually talk about Holofit, the virtual reality discussion. We're gonna boop push that one to the side. So let's talk about what you're actually getting when you get into Holofit because that's kind of the, that's the experience, right? Is what they are giving you. Well, when you first sign up, you're going to create a profile. You're assigned a trainer when you get in there. He looks basically naked, but with a, a unisuit on his body, which is how we imagine all of our trainers. <laughs> <laughs> in skin tight suits standing in front of you looking regal. Anyways, you select, you're given a trainer there and then you get into the, the world uh, in which you are given kind of a, a heads up of different workout types as well as your settings that you could have access to. Now in here, I have this remote which is actually allowing me to do some of the critical elements but most of what you end up doing actually falls into, you're gonna point at it with your headset. What happens is this maintains a perspective point that is dedicated once you sit down on your machine. I had a couple moments where I would, for example, have it up on my head and I'd be standing up and then I'd sit down on the machine, put the headset down and it had, it had determined a wrong point. And that was user error on that. So all of a sudden, you know, my, my person or my avatar was like looking up and to the left and I had to like really pull my head down to be looking straight forward. So that, you know, it's a moment where you have to recalibrate. But what happens, you get in, you are going to set up your profile and then you have a number of different workout styles that you're going to be able to choose from. Uh, so the first thing that you're gonna notice when you actually get into your whole fit system and through your incredibly attractive spandex strap trainer is that you're gonna get to choose from either single player 
or multiplayer. Now, the multiplayer side is just starting to develop for them. So those are currently expanding. In fact, as I had my headset is when they started to expand on some of those multiplayer functions. So let's just talk quickly about, and I'm doing this because literally as you're seeing it on the screen, if I have an outline around my face, it's because I've had the unit on, but on the left side is where you're seeing single player and on the right side, you're using, you're seeing multiplayer. Now each thing is selected by, you have a little target in front of you and you simply highlight what it is that you wanna see. You keep your head on it long enough and it selects it. It's like a mouse click or a touch screen, if you will, but you're just doing it by orienting your head towards that actual thing. Okay, so when you're actually looking at this, on the left-hand side, you're gonna have explore, cardio goals, race, and time attack beta. On the right hand side under multiplayer, you're gonna see online multi and local multi. Now I didn't actually get a chance to try any of the multiplayer, so I'm not gonna be able to speak to those, but on the single player side, I definitely was able to experiment and play with each of the different styles there. Now in explore, what you're going to do is essentially just row through whatever scenery you want. And here's where it starts to get interesting inside Holofit is you're giving you're given a range of scenes to choose from. And these go from space to mythical worlds to just standard rowing courses. You're gonna have quite a few options in here, which are gonna give you the ability to row in different locations and whatever interests you. For example, I enjoyed rowing on the actual rowing courses or through, it's called Canyon. It looks kind of like what Old West style Grand Canyon would be. So that was kind of cool for me. My wife, she loves space. Uh, she loves space. And so that was a really cool experiment for her was being able to sit on the machine and rowing through space in different kind of crafts. So your craft is going to change depending on what kind of environment you are in. So you will choose what location you want to be in and then you're just free to explore. Now what happens is that your machine or your boat or your whatever it is will move through that world on a predetermined course. So it's not like you're free to just turn whatever way you want. There are moments in time when you're actually on the course where you will get to choose left or right. And you choose that by looking at the location that you want to go to and that will help you determine if you're going left or right and choosing the different course, which means that over time, it's going to give you greater exposure to those worlds. For example, if you went left every time in one workout, the next time you could go all right, or you could start to explore different pathways. And by doing that, that world becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. What's happening when you're in those worlds is you're seeing interactive elements that are happening around you. Now, much of this is still in kind of the digital cartoon age. So that's kind of what you're seeing inside here. You're not seeing like what looks like a real person. You're definitely seeing a, a video game version of what a person or a, a ram looking at you or a, you know fish, sharks, whatever, what those look like. You're seeing that kind of digital cartoon version of it. So it's not 100% realistic in that sense. Then as you go through, you just get to row as long at whatever pace as you want with no real markers guiding what you're doing. It just lets you, you're free to explore, which is why it's called explore. So let's take a look at what some of the other setups are going to give you. Next up on the single player side is race. So with race, it's pretty self-explanatory in that you're going to choose a distance anywhere from 500 up to a half marathon. Personally, I feel like that would be a long time to spend with your head in virtual reality, but you could have up to a half marathon in which you have 10 other players that are competing with you. And most likely these are going to be set up as just avatars inside the game and you're racing for that distance. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Again, you get to choose your location. You get to choose your course. Every location is going to have a, a myriad of other courses inside of it. So, you know, space is going to have four different locations and, and things that you're gonna do there. Canyon is the same. So you're gonna have different locations at each of these. And so you just drill down. You choose your distance, you choose your broad location, you choose your narrow location, and then off you go. The race starts and you're going to, I'm assuming that these times are going to build based off of your avatar and the times that you've performed in the past. And that's gonna help give you probably a more competitive advantage when you get into it where the times and the people you're racing against, the avatars are gonna be more competitive the better you get, the more competitive they will get. Next up is gonna be time attack. And on time attack, you're using a set benchmark time in which you're competing to get as many meters as you can within that given time. It's a pretty standard, I'm gonna give you two minutes. How many meters can you get? Then what happens is you, you have to start with an initial test or benchmark, if you will. Again, you're doing it within your given world and then your given location in that world. And then from there, 
it's going to remember that time, you can come back to it and now compete against an avatar of yourself. So it's going to keep the pacing of what you did last time. And now you get to compete against yourself and actually see that ghosted image of yourself rowing out in front of you for going slower, or you'll never see it if, if you're going faster than it. So that's your time attack. I think it is an interesting way to, to give you kind of a pace boat is essentially what you're getting is you're getting a pace boat of your fastest time recorded at or fastest split, let's say at that given time. And you can go from two minutes up to 30, I think. So you've got a range of times to choose from there. And that's gonna give you the ability to select, all right, what do I wanna work on? How hard do I wanna push? And do I wanna push? Because you'll know what that given time is and how hard you wanna work against that. And next up is cardio goals. Now, what you're gonna get in cardio goals is more along the lines of what you would see, for example, on a treadmill where you're gonna select high intensity interval workout. And it predetermines your, you know, when you are going hard and when it wants you to back off on your pacing. That's what you're getting here. You get to choose from basically easy to very hard on the scale of how you want that workout to go. You obviously get to choose your location and then you're also gonna choose your time. Now what happens when you get into it is it gives you a warm up period. So it lets you move through the warm up, and then it's going to determine what your pacing needs to be based off of how hard you've chosen it to be. And what you see is this big archway that kind of runs over your course line and they help you iron in your pace by trying, they've got green, yellow, and red. And your goal is for your arrow to stay in the green. And if you start to slip outside of the appropriate pacing, it starts to slide. To, uh, whether you're going too fast or too slow, it starts falling off of the arch and you're kind of rowing through each arch. And it give, they give you these periodic checkpoints to make sure that you're staying on. And that's how your, your workout is scored, is how well you're able to keep that floating arrow in the right pace boat. I actually found this to be a very engaging way of trying to stay on my pace. I did find it challenging, however, to stay exactly where it wanted me and kind of like guessing where I needed to have my pace. Things that I would have made that a little bit easier for me were knowing exactly what my pace was supposed to be and being able to see my pace a little bit more intuitively so that I'd know if I were right where I needed to be and making the kind of progression that I should be making inside of that workout. But nonetheless, it was a fun way of knowing if I was on my target splits. And it's also kind of nice to be able to say, listen, I just wanna do high intensity interval training today. You make it a half an hour and I wanna do it in Cambridge. And boom, you're in Cambridge rowing a 30 minute high intensity interval training predetermined workout that tells you when you work and when you rest. It's kind of, you don't have to think about it. So that of all the formats that I found, that was probably the most engaging for me was going against myself with a predetermined workout format. Now, something interesting that just made me think of it when we were talking about Cambridge, as you get familiar with this system, the more novice setups, you actually row forward instead of backwards. But when you get to the higher levels of this and you start to get more in depth into the workouts, you row backwards the right way. So it is also interesting to be able to see the ways in which you interact differently with the environment. And it was very smart of them, I think, to give you forwards rowing at first to make sure that you're not confused because inevitably in real rowing, you go backwards. That's confusing to a lot of people. And if you've never watched a rowing regatta, you wouldn't know that you go backwards. So if you jumped into this thing and all of a sudden you're traveling backwards, you're like, my headset is broken. I have no idea why it's doing this. You do normally move backwards, but smartly for beginners, they have you going forward so you get familiar. And then when you get to real rowing courses, you start moving backwards the way you actually are supposed to. Okay, so another piece of this is you need some kind of VR headset setup. Now it doesn't need to be this, which is the Vive setup. Again, they sent this to me. I did not purchase this, but this is a pretty substantial setup. It's heavy. It definitely fits pretty snug on my head. And what I noticed is that to make sure that I'm getting clear vision in here, I had to have it pretty tight on my head. Now that obviously has nothing to do with Holofit because they're going to be able to play on multiple different platforms regardless of what kind of headset you're using. But I wanna just walk you through what it looks like from an outsider's perspective to see me get a game up and running in here so that you can just see what the whole process looks like. Let's get in. All right, here we go. So to start, now it's giving me a horizon line and I need to align my horizon with that line, hold it still for three seconds. 
and then it's gonna let me into my Holodia or Holofit experience. Okay, so here's my magical trainer in all of his glory. Uh, I go to a more options menu over here, which is why I'm looking that direction and away he goes, dissolves into the ether. Next up, I'm brought to my home setting. Now I don't have a machine connected at this moment in time. It's back here. I know it's back there. Nope. Nope, okay, it's further away than I thought. So essentially I'm floating in space. Now what is interesting is I do get 360 degrees here. So turning around, I have a menu behind me, which I've actually never even noticed before, but I'm just kind of in space, if you will. Now again, off to the left-hand side, I have my single player options, explore, time attack beta, race, and cardio goals. And on the right, I have my multiplayer, local multi and online multi. Down below, I have settings, language, home, and back. Now again, I also have a little cursor that's straight in front of me. I think I'm looking at you guys. And that cursor, once I put it onto a target or a button, I am given a little green scroll wheel which moves around my target and when it completes the circle, it's gonna select that for me. That way I don't accidentally pre-select an option here. So let's just, I'm gonna go to explore. Not that I'm gonna row in this moment. I'll do that in a second for you. Then I'm looking at all my worlds. I've got Cambridge, Saturn, Babylon, Antarctica, Snowy Mountains, Egbelet, Canyon, Paris, Tropical and San Francisco. Let's just go to San Francisco, staying on the West Coast here. And now in San Francisco, I'm given Forest Road, Bay, Golden Gate, and End Bridge. I assume these are all different, lo I chose End Bridge. So these are all different locations in the San Francisco course. It's taking time to load now, so I'm seeing my little load screen, which takes you know, about 15 seconds maybe. My screen goes black and up we go. So right now I am on the Golden Gate Bridge. I've got kind of my start line in front of me. And I love this because rarely have anybody seen these in the real world. I am sitting on an erg bike right now, an actual, not a bike erg by concept too, but an erg bike, like a bicycle that has four wheels with a rowing setup. Now, if I'm doing this, I can actually get my character to move or my avatar to move back and forth. I'm sorry, it's a three wheel. They all just rode by me. If I turn around, I can see somebody coming towards me behind me. I see planes flying. There's a blimp up there. There's traffic heading the other direction. Thank goodness I'm not having to compete with traffic going this way. And I'm seeing little advertisements along the road like I'm on an actual race course. There goes another guy in his spandex on his three wheeled erg bike. But right in front of me is my heads up display, essentially. There are 21 trophies I can gather in this course. And it's gonna tell me, so along the way, that it, they're gonna be little things. And if I see them, I can focus on them for a couple seconds, and then I collect that trophy. Then I have volume up, down over here on the left-hand side, which I can use my vision to change. Then I have an exit button over here, and right in front of me, I have split, my calorie burn, my stroke rate, total time accumulated. And because I'm not connected to a machine, I have a little ball at the top that's saying, Ro, come on, you're not going anywhere, you're staying put. So next up, let me connect this to my monitor or to my machine and I'll just show you what a little run through with this headset looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go through again this setup and you'll hear and I'll walk you through what I'm actually doing to get this machine connected to my headset and get Holofit actually connected. Then I'm gonna walk you through this setup and show you what the, or I guess talk to you through what the beginning of a workout looks like. It's a little tough because I can't record what's happening in here, but I'm gonna show you some footage so that you can get the same feeling as what I'm going through. So I'm gonna get this thing queued up. I'm gonna, on my menu, I'm going to hit the connect button and then I'm gonna jump in here. So I've got my horizon line, I'm lining it up and it's good. Every time you take the headset off, it asks you to, to realign. So that's important because once you sit down, you need to realign to where you are. All right, so here's my trainer again. I am going to get to my options menu, goodbye. And now I will get connected, hopefully. So I'm gonna to go to the settings menu. Oh, it looks like it's connected. So I'm just going to peek. Okay, so I'm connected here. My device is paired. That means I'm gonna head back to my home and I'm gonna choose race. Let's check out a race and see what this looks like. I'm just gonna do 500 meters and let's do this in Paris, why not? Let's go by the Eiffel Tower. Okay, so, oh, here we go. Here's, here's the fun. I'm, I'm strapping in, feeling my environment. There's my handle. I got it. Because once it starts going, it's gonna count me down. And once it starts, it starts. So I gotta be ready to go once I get into the race mode here. All right, my screen's blacked out. Paris is pulled up. It's saying prepare, and it's gonna count me down. Three, two, 
one, and here we go. Well, they're off to a fast start. They're off to a fast start. I'm gonna have to catch up. All right, so here's where, ah, oh, we're, right, we're on erg bikes again. I just ran through a flock of birds sitting in the street. Here again is where it's a little bit challenging because my eye is not necessarily tuned into the virtual reality yet. So, all right, I'm coming up on second place here. I'm in third out of 10 right now. About to pass this guy with my consistency. Nudging him out of the way. There's the Eiffel Tower right in front of me. So what I'm seeing is a, you know, it's a, a beautiful rendering. I'm gonna run into some people. Um, but my eye and my body are very confused in this moment in time. That definitely takes its toll. And I, and I believe Holofit as well, suggest that you start kind of gently, not starting with intensity, because if you go too hard on this, it can be quite uh, confusing. And you can actually get a little bit of motion sickness as I did my very first time on this. All right, let's take my split down. See if I can catch this guy. I'm gaining ground, but maybe it's too little too late. Coming up on my final 100 meters. Oh, he's putting on a sprint. Took it in the last stroke. Took it in the last stroke. So now I'm rewarded with fireworks and confetti. And a big first place as I I have a big leaderboard in front of me watching everybody else finish. And now you can continue going after this as everybody else is. But that is essentially a talk through a 500 meter race. Man, there's just confetti everywhere. I feel very special right now. Being in that moment, it's kind of cool. It's not the same as being in reality. It is for certain virtual. And there's an element to it that you may love, you may hate. It's a computerized version of the world, which means that it definitely looks fake. However, it gives you some elements of connection, like targets to shoot for, other people to push against, and things like that, that definitely make a leap forward in what an experience of being on this machine can be like. And I think that that is inherently where the value in this lies is in giving you a more interactive experience of perhaps racing or training. The rest of it is up to you, whether or not you like the quality of the graphics or how it interacts or having to wear a headset or if you like virtual reality or not, those are all things that you have to settle for yourself. But the advantage that you gain here is number one, you get enveloped into some kind of an ecosystem and two, it gives you other ways of shooting for targets. At the end of the day, I, I still don't know that I have my mind made up about whether or not I like virtual reality on the ERG yet, but I do feel that this is a good step in the right direction towards creating more unique moments on this machine that are not just sitting on this machine. I forget about what's happening around me. I was immersed in that and to take my headset off is kind of a shock remembering that I'm still here in reality. So I wanna know what you think. Would you give this a try? Would you try virtual reality on this machine? What do you think? Good, bad, ugly? Let's hear it in the comments below. I wanna see what kind of a discussion plays out here because maybe that's gonna give Holofit feedback, it's gonna give me feedback, and we can all learn what do you wanna see out of the indoor rowing world. If you enjoyed that content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that little bell next to it so that you get alerted when we come out with new videos. And if you're just getting started on your own journey and you wanna learn how to use this machine and you want good beginner workouts to follow, check out that beginner workout playlist here. And if you're interested in signing up for Holofit, I've got the link in the description below. Heads up, I get an affiliate fee for that for referring you, but maybe it's a way that you could continue forward and you find a new way of interacting with your machine. 